Surfing the web for merchandise is like shopping in the world's largest superstore. For sellers and buyers, it can be the easiest way to do business. But for scam artists, it's their playground for ripping you off. Basically, I got messed over really bad. Shauna Oaks's experience with a scam artist has cost her big time. I'm 1500 in the negative right now, plus all the uh, weekly charges for being in the negative. Bank fees, along with the money she wired to someone she thought she knew, began with a simple ad on the Internet. I had an ad on the WITN Classifieds um, for Ashley Bedroom Sales. She posted it on the web to sell for $1,500. I got an email from this gentleman who was interested in it, like the next day after I had put the ad in there. Shauna says she talked to a man named Smith Powell over the phone for a week. After making a deal, she requested he send a cashier's check. So he did, but for much more than the cost of the bed set, $2,950 to be exact. When I got it, I kind of thought it was fishy because of the overseas, you know, address that it was. So I took it back to my bank and asked them to verify it. And they said it was good. <laughs> so I cashed it. The extra money was supposed to cover shipping fees. She sent that money to a person supposedly handling the shipping, Doran Damien, in the United Kingdom for the amount of $1,562. Powell then sent another check to Shauna for $1,650. She wasn't sure why. It was at that time her bank discovered something was wrong with the first check. About three days later, they called me and said that the check was counterfeit and therefore I had to pay it back. But how, she thought. Shauna is unemployed and on disability for multiple sclerosis or MS. She's raising three boys, a 12-year-old and one-year-old twins. One of the twins, Max, has a genetic disorder which requires him to be on a feeding tube. With medical supplies needed for her and her son, money is tight, and this situation didn't make it any better. Devastation, kind of, because I knew that it was my disability check and my son's disability check on the line. Shauna says her bank kept her disability checks, leaving her penniless. Um, I got hit not only by the scammer, but by my bank as well. We contacted her bank, Wood Forest, in Moorhead City, but they declined to comment about the case. So we turned to North Carolina's Attorney General, Roy Cooper. There are a number of warning signals that are out there, and we're encouraging banks and credit unions to ask questions. Like if this check is from someone they know personally, or if it's money from a sale on the Internet, and if this money will be wired overseas. The key is they want you to wire them money before that check clears the bank. And they know that as soon as that check is dishonored, that you will be left holding the bag. Not to mention, holding on to hope, the scam artist will get caught. I just want to have my money back and let people be aware that um, these kind of scams, they're just getting bigger and better. In Moorhead City, Lynette Taylor, WITN News. Sometimes planning a trip can be a big part of your travel adventure, but travel agent Richard Rado says... It's good to check out those budget price travel offers. One, you probably need to go ahead and possibly call the Better Business Bureau. You ought to go ahead and possibly call the chamber in the city that that uh, company is located. Look, if you're looking on the internet, make sure there's a street other than just a post office box. And it wouldn't hurt also to call the company itself. And Rado says, look out for an offer with an unbelievable price. If it looks just way too good to be true, it probably is. For extra added insurance, Rados recommends always paying with a credit card. won't help you 100% if you lose the money, but at least you'll be a step up in, in trying to get your money back. Sound advice for a safe trip. In Greenville, Tom Skinner, WITN News. The beautiful waters of Lake Gaston in Halifax County crash against these rocks. It's property that is coveted by many in eastern North Carolina, but what if you invested thousands of dollars and that property was never available for sale? Today we're having people go out and try to get uh, people with large sums of money to buy into a uh, piece of property that they're going to sell. In light of the real estate industry right now, nationwide and locally, uh, they probably have an attractive sales pitch. A pitch temple says that could leave you, the investor, high and dry, even though a contract may make the deal appear legit. 
In this case, the investor put up $25,000 on a lakefront lot, thinking he would be getting back a hefty return and a plot of land similar to this one. They will tell the victims that they've got this already, it's already a done deal. I just need more capital. And eventually telling the buyer that the sale fell through, often anteing up several excuses. There are currently six open cases in Halifax County on this type of fraud, but a conviction doesn't always mean jail time. The primary reason for probation when restitution is involved is to try to collect. Something Halifax County's finest say the scam artists are well aware of. Get an attorney, research it, and make sure it's a clear title, deeds to land and property, make sure it isn't somebody just trying to hustle you. In Halifax County, Ken Hynek, WITN News. Scams, they come from around the globe, and Greenville Detective Frank DeSantis is tracking the suspects, but catching the culprit can be a nearly impossible task. These scams, it'll lead me out of the country, and once it leaves the country, I'll take it as far as I can take it, and then it has to stop because, you know, different countries have different laws. DeSantis says recently more people in Greenville have become aware of scams and are calling him, something he urges people to do. I'll tell them that after they after I talk to them over the phone, because all of them have common traits to them, all these scams, I'll say it's probably just a scam. You just go ahead and not respond, just delete it. DeSantis says one scam known as the Hitman scam has recently resurfaced. It began in December of 2006 out of Russia. Now it's becoming popular again. Victims use an email saying that this person has targeted them. They're going to go out, they're targeted to be killed unless they pay X amount of dollars. Usually it's between the $20,000 and $80,000 range. Uh, and don't contact the police. The letter itself looks very genuine. Okay, and, and reading it, not knowing that this type of fraud is out there, you'd, you'd probably be afraid that somebody really is going to go ahead and try to kill you. DeSantis says being aware is key in saving yourself from being a victim of a scam. In Greenville, Christina Vitale, WITN News.